My name is Yvonne O. Oh. I'm Associate Professor of Ophthalmology at the University of California in San Francisco. So at the Glaucoma Patient Summit, I spoke about promising research horizons and the path to a cure. There's a lot of excitement in the area of glaucoma research and in um, glaucoma in general in terms of um, new medications, new glaucoma surgical options. And in the area of research, I wanted to convey that there's a lot of dedicated scientists who are really trying hard to try to understand glaucoma at its root cause, trying to also potentially cure it with some really exciting approaches. So some of the research areas that I highlighted were retinal regeneration or rewiring within the retina, because if we are to try to rescue cells, ganglion cells in the retina, they need to find their appropriate partners and they need to form the appropriate connections. The second area I focused on was axonal regeneration. Um, axonal regeneration is, of course, one of the holy grails of optic nerve regeneration. And we need the axons to grow um, all the way from the retina to the brain. That's a distance of about 40 to 50 millimeters. Once they grow back to the um, appropriate targets in the brain, they need to form the right connections as well. The third area I focused on was stem cells, and I just tried to highlight that stem cells in glaucoma therapy could both be for trabecular meshwork cell replacement, retinal ganglion cell replacement, but also just in the interim using stem cells um, and ganglion cells that are derived from stem cells to model human glaucoma and to use it for high throughput drug screening. And then the last um, area that I spoke about was whole eye transplant, which is a um, project funded by the Department of Defense. Um, and it's very exciting. Um, I still think early days, but the idea is that there's potential for doing a hemifacial transplant with the eye, being able to connect the blood vessels, supply it with blood vessels, reconnect the optic nerve. Of course, there's many hurdles. We have to get the optic nerve to regenerate. The primary investigator, principal investigator of that study has called it a moonshot, and I think it is, but I think it's really exciting. My lab has really benefited from support from the Glaucoma Research Foundation. We've been able to explore new avenues that we might not otherwise be able to, and also try to generate new hypotheses, new sets of experiments that we could then take and try to also grow into bigger research direction. So one such area is the use of ERG or electroretinography, which is a more objective way of measuring retinal function than having a, a patient do a visual field test. And um, we've been trying to develop novel ERG stimuli to diagnose glaucoma earlier and follow its progression. Um, one of the main um, interests of my lab is trying to identify those ganglion cells that are more vulnerable in glaucoma because we know that actually not every ganglion cell is the same. There are some that are more susceptible and there are some that are more resilient. And this is work that has um, been replicated in many different labs, which I think is great because it really means that it's a robust finding. For example, Dr. Andy Huberman, who was a Catalyst for a Cure awardee, also found that the same type that we found in a different model was also more susceptible to glaucoma. And that is um, work that I feel like Glaucoma Research Foundation has been really supportive of. I think this summit is fantastic because it really covers the panoply from having speakers who are discussing the latest surgical advances to the newest medications, as well as uh, physicians talking about how to improve the care and the physician-patient relationship and also alternative treatments all the way to um, new research findings. And I feel like this is a really wonderful way for a patient to get educated about their disease, which I think is a, a, an important aspect of uh, one's care. I think it's really important to also raise awareness about glaucoma and um, highlight the needs that patients have for patients to hear about what's going on in the research arena and uh, new technologies, but also for us to be able to know what are patients concerned about, um, what are the areas that um, need the most um, focus. And you know, I think that some of the questions that I get from patients about new research findings, sometimes it's hard because I have to say, well, you know, we have interesting findings in the lab. We're not quite there yet with patients, but I think that um, bridge is getting smaller. I think that there are folks like myself as well as other scientists and other clinician scientists who recognize that we need to um, get it into humans more quickly if we can. Mm -hmm.